These are three tips to win quickly in classical chess. It's way different from a blitz game because in classical chess, each player has way more time to think, at least 90 minutes. And this means that you need to be way more precise in every stage of the game. To start well, the first thing that you need is a good opening preparation. Today specifically, I want to show you what you should do when your opponent plays something that you didn't expect. This game is from round 6 of the Maya Chess Open, and after having played the move e4, I was expecting the French defense. Instead, my opponent went for the Sicilian. Here I played my normal move, knight f3, knight c6, and I played the Rosso Limo, which has a long-term plan to go for the move d4 after having played the move c3. Now, my opponent played the move uh, e6, and I went for the move, very obvious, very normal, castle. Uh, usually, in my online games, I have played so many times bishop takes e6, so I tried to go for something that he might not have prepared, castle, but I know very well. Um, knight g7 is a very typical move. Basically, black is first protecting this knight with the knight, before playing the move a6, attacking the bishop. Now I played rook e1, which is a very important move, because my idea is that after a6, I'm not going to trade this bishop. I don't want to give up my bishop pair. Instead, I'm going back with the bishop on f1. Now, against any move of my opponent, my plan would be very clear. I play c3, I play d4, and then I'm going to develop the rest of my pieces. The only move where I would do something different is the move d5, which is the most challenging move exactly for this reason. Now, usually the main move here is to capture, but I had prepared at home, not for this precise game, a novelty, and I used it in this game. And this is a suggestion for you try to find out some small surprises here and there in your repertoire, so that even if your opponent is surprising you, you can counter-surprise them. So here I played the move d3 and my opponent started to think. Here there are a few options, a black can take the pawn or black can push. What do you think about the move pawn takes? It seems like after this, black would get in an end game. That should be fine. But why is the evaluation bar saying that white is plus 0, 70, nearly a pawn up. And the reason is that those pawns on the queen side are leaving lots of weak squares. For example, if my knight can go on c4, that's gonna be really nice. Maybe I need to prepare it with the move a4 to stop the move b5, uh, maybe not even needed. Um, white is clearly better. So actually here, after the move d3, my opponent needs to go for the move d5, uh, sorry, d4. Now, if a French player, so I know that you can get some similar setups like this in the French defense, but he clearly wasn't familiar with what exactly you need to play in this position, because after the move e5, he already went wrong. Here the main move is to go with the knight g6, attacking this pawn 50 million times, also with the move queen c7, and actually there is a very interesting line where white is sacrificing a pawn, uh, and then is getting some um, queen h5, uh, attacking this pawn, and maybe also some chances to attack the black king. He didn't go for this line, he rather went for uh, the knight on d5. Now, another suggestion I want to give you, and it's very important, and I want to remind also to, to myself, is that don't study opening like a machine you shouldn't just know the moves by heart, because at some point your opponent will play something new, something that you don't know anymore the exact move. So the only way to find the right plan is if you know the ideas. And here I went slightly wrong, because I was following a plan, but it's not the perfect plan in this position. Um, the right plan here for white would be to play the move c4, exploiting this knight on d5, attacking it with tempo, and if the pawn is capturing en passant, I would just take back with this pawn. And actually I get a very nice position because now finally my pieces have some very nice square to move around instead before they were a little bit stuck. You will see the difference. And if the knight is going back, I could go on with the same exact plan as I did in the game, but way better because this pawn uh, is on c4, so the knight can no longer be on d5. 
Okay, so I played the move g3, I still knew a plan, and this is very important to have a sort of guideline. And here what I want to do is bishop g2, and then maybe to move h4, and then somehow bring this knight towards the king's side and start an attack against the king if they castle short. Okay, so e1, bishop e7, bishop g2, b6. Now this b6 was already a sign for me that my opponent might go towards a different plan. Uh, bishop b7, queen c7, and long castle. So I had to be ready for it, but also ready that my opponent might just be, um, might just delay the move short castle, so it, it could, they could still go for this one. I played knight uh, d2, they went with the knight, uh, with the bishop out, and I played the move h4. Um, according to the engine, this plan is a little bit slow, would have been much better to have uh, a pawn on c4. Uh, that's why I have, it's now already equal the evaluation. And actually I will be also soon a little bit worse after the move h5. I played the move uh, h5 to fix this pawn structure. Now the g7 pawn is a good target. Imagine my queen on g4 uh, could be, would be very annoying. And if they castle short, I can always bring my knight towards g4 and start to calculate all those sacrifices on h6. So this was my plan with the move h5. They went with queen uh, c7 with the clear plan of castling long. In this position, I was thinking that um, I need to uh, get started with some sort of um, plan if they go long castle. Because I know my plan if they go short castle, but what am I doing if they really go long castle? And here I played the move a4, which according to the engine is not the most precise move, but from a practical point of view, this position is so complex that here actually the best move for black is to castle short. And survive, black needs to survive the attack. And the engine is amazing at defending, but a human makes blunder. So this actually, I would be very happy to get this position with the white pieces. And it's very similar to the French uh, with e4, uh, e6 and d3, d5. This is, you get some similar positions. After the move a4, my opponent went completely wrong. And here we go to the third tip. Combine positional chess with tactical chess, with calculation. It's always a mixture. You cannot be just a tactical player, you cannot be just a positional player. And we will see a very good example why. The move g5 is a positional mistake. Because after en passant, uh, the pawn is taken back, and now this is going to be a long-term weakness. But positional chess is not enough, because in any position, you always need to look for tactics. And here, or uh, for concrete reasons. Now here I played bishop h3, I'm attacking this pawn on a6, and there is just one move that is not uh, leaving black in a worse position. And it's the move long castle. I didn't even consider this move. Because what is the idea? I mean, this pawn is falling with check. Why on earth should black lose a pawn and be even better? And the reality is that this position is very complex and very rich and it's just a small deal. The point is that this pawn is actually long -term, a long-term weakness and white is struggling with developing all the pieces. For example, this bishop doesn't really have a good square to go, even if this knight is moving. So even with a pawn up here, white is a bit worse. Not so easy to understand. In fact, I didn't even think about that move and my opponent immediately played uh, queen d7. Now white is much better, but positionally we understand why white is better, because this pawn is weak long term. But now we need to use tactics in order to exploit, to increase the pressure even more. And here I did some nice calculation and found the beautiful move knight c4. Of course here b5 is no good, because I can go with knight d6, sacrifice a pawn temporarily, because if the queen is taking, bada boom! The rook is joining the party, helping the bishop, and this would be a completely lost position for uh, black. So after knight c4, I think he played the best move, which is to castle, um, removing the king from the danger. And now going for this idea is not as appealing, because after this, I, I take 
this is chess, not checkers. Or oh, black doesn't have to take the pawn. So they could just defend it maybe with this rook here. And it wouldn't be so easy for me if you see the advantage went down. Instead, after the move long castle, positional chess again. How can I improve all my pieces? Now, this knight is amazing. This bishop cannot really be improved. This bishop is amazing. The knight. I went with the knight on d2. And the knight is sliding towards the square on d6. This is a great plan and cannot be stopped. Of course, always you need to see concrete reasons. And one concrete move for black here is the move b5. Always uh, important to check out this move. My opponent played this move b5 and I was ready for it. I was super ready. I took the pawn and I went with my knight on d6. It seems like this pawn is going to be weak long term and this one instead can be easily protected, but after the move rook d8 protecting the pawn, I had ready knight e4. I'm protecting the pawn and I'm attacking the pawn on c5 that can no longer be protected. I think my opponent here was already mm, accepted already his destiny, because I think there is a fighting move that he could have uh, played, that is the move king b8, just removing the king from this diagonal, and once I take, the queen is taking, and at least it's not so clear how to win here for white. I thought in the game, because if I take, um, can I take this pawn? Well, if I take this pawn, I'm threatening nothing, that's the point. And if you see, the advantage goes down. So actually, I thought that um, I might just take this bishop, so I have a strong bishop that could potentially be very annoying. And here I would like to open up the files. I love the move c4 so energetically. If the pawn is taking, I might even just leave the pawn there, go with the queen and try to give checkmate. And um, this position looks very nice. After pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, I think I can just play queen b6. Uh, engine prefers something else, uh, but... Uh, Many moves uh, look good here. Maybe queen f3 is better because we are uh, pinning the knight. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe queen c2 is better. Yeah, we found the best move. All right. Queen c2 is a very good move. Attacking the knight and also attacking the one behind so the bishop can come to attack. Maybe bishop f4 can be good. So many nice moves. Bishop b2 is great. So anyway, my opponent went for... A lazy move, I would say, rook hf8, because now I'm taking. The queen is taking my pawn and I take here with the knight. I'm attacking the rook. The rook needs to move. And now the final move. Can you find it? Knight e7. There we go. And this is a check, discovery check. It's quite of a simple move. And after the king, ta the king moves, I took the rook, took also here, and my opponent resigned. If you enjoyed this game, don't forget to like the video and go check out this video. YouTube thinks you will like it. Let me know. Thank you for watching.